The next presenter is Dr. Yoshiaki Nakao. The title of his talk is First Coupling Reactions by Cooperative Metal Catalysis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your introduction. I'd like to follow the previous speakers to thank Professor Yamamoto and Dr. Suzuki for inviting me to this uh, memorial symposium. Also, I'd like to thank the previous speakers for leaving me enough time. I have, I think, uh, maybe 20 minutes to speak. <laughs> so I can be relaxed, I guess. But uh, at the same time, I feel a bit nervous because I see Professor Maroka, Professor Kita, and Professor Hirama, in, the, in addition to Professor Yamamoto, sitting in front of me. That reminds me of the interview that I had, uh, I had five years ago. And uh, I'm, I believe that uh, there is no evaluation today for maybe some uh, hidden special lectureship award from the 10 previous awardees. But anyway, uh, today I'm going to tell you about uh, cross-coupling reaction by cooperative uh, uh, metal catalysis. So here is shown the, uh, some uh, scheme that is, uh, represents our uh, current uh, goal of my research group, that is some uh, New, the, the development of new reactions by taking advantage of uh, uh, multiple metal catalysts, not only two, but also maybe three or four different metal catalysts. Let me tell you first what is uh, cooperative catalysis. So everybody here knows that the transition metal catalyzed reactions are very useful for organic synthesis, and uh, today, uh, it's, they are really essential for modern organic synthesis. But uh, many of uh, useful transition metal catalyzed, catalyzed reactions are relying on the use of a single metal catalyst, I think. So you have uh, many different types of metal complexes having um, different ligands that induce a, a variety of reactivity so that uh, you can uh, have uh, many different types of transformation. Of course, you could further improve the uh, single side transition metal catalysis by improving the, uh, some ligands because you have an infinite possibility to have different ligand and the metal combinations. But rather, we are interested in having two or more different uh, metal complexes in the same reaction mixture to have cooperativity of these uh, different metal catalysts. Here is shows, shown uh, one type of cooperative catalysis that is uh, doubly activating cooperative catalysis. So you have two different, met two different metal complexes that should uh, react with a single substrate to give a doubly activated species. And then you could expect completely new transformation from uh, the reaction of uh, the doubly activated species with other substrate to give some product. So basically, uh, I gave uh, lectures on this type of uh, uh, doubly activating cooperative catalysis in my MBLA lecture tour in two, 2010, pa pa with particular uh, focus on the use of NECO aluminum cooperative system for carbon-carbon bond functionalization and carbon-hydrogen bond activation reaction. But more recently, we have became, become interested in one other type of cooperative catalysis, that, that is synergistic cooperative catalysis. In this type of cooperative catalysis, you have uh, two different uh, uh, metal complexes that activate a respective substrate to give respective uh, reactive intermediates. Then you have the action between these two uh, reactive species to give a product. So here you could still ex expect a new transformation can be possible from the, uh, uh, these two reactive species. Each cycle can be known catalytic cycle, but still combining to these two catalytic, even known catalytic cycle, you can expect to have a completely new transformation that should be useful for uh, uh, synthetic organic chemistry. So today, I'd like to, I'd like to tell you about uh, this, uh, some examples of such synergistic cooperative catalysis uh, with uh, focusing on the use of palladium copper cooperative catalysis for the cross coupling type reactions with nucleophile generated in situ from the functionalization of some unsaturated compounds. So, palladium copper cooperative synergistic catalysis has been known for a long time actually, since the uh, pioneering work of Sonogashira cross coupling. 
Everybody here knows that the Sonogashira cross coupling is the reaction of uh, terminal alkynes with allyl halides in the presence of both palladium and the copper catalyst to give uh, allylated alkynes. This uh, cooperative catalysis has been extended to other type of cross coupling chemistry. For example, Stille cross coupling reaction has been known uh, to be accelerated by the presence of uh, copper core catalyst. We ourselves have also uh, extended this uh, cooperative catalysis to the silicon based cross coupling reaction so that uh, we, we could activate uh, possibly very unreactive tetra organo alkyl silane reagent to cross couple with allyl halides in the presence of palladium and copper catalyst to give alkylated arenes even uh, with a secondary alkyl uh, silicon reagent. So here is shown the uh, well-known uh, cooperative system uh, uh, proposed for the uh, Sonogashira cross-coupling. Palladium is uh, responsible for the activation of allyl halides, whereas copper is responsible for the generation of copper acetylide uh, from uh, terminal alkynes. And then transmetallation from copper to palladium operates to give the uh, palladium two intermediate that is responsible for the formation of uh, alkenylated allyl products. In the case of uh, main group, uh, the use of main group organometallic reagent, that is, uh, for example, steel cross coupling and the silicon based cross coupling that I showed in the previous slide, you have transmetallation from main group organometallics to copper. Then you have either alkenyl or alkyl copper species that is uh, undergoing transmetallation with palladium two species to end up with the uh, alkylated or alkenylated allyl product upon reductive elimination. In this system, actually, you need to prepare the uh, corresponding main group organometallic reagent through independent procedure. That is, uh, in many cases, for example, hydrometallation of alkynes or alkenes, so that uh, you need to have uh, multi-step sequences to to have the, your desired coupling product from uh, uh, given allyl halides and uh, some uh, uh, alkynes and uh, metallating reagents. We simply imagine that the uh, corresponding organ copper species could be generated in situ through the uh, hydrocupulation of uh, saturated compounds. By doing so, we could eliminate the need to prepare the main group organometallic reagents uh, that was sh uh, shown this in uh, this part, so that uh, we can obtain the uh, coupling product in a single uh, step. <coughs> Indeed, the key hydrocupulation step has been known for uh, for some time since uh, Professor Sadigi at that time at MIT reported the stoichiometric hydrocupulation of uh, uh, unsaturated compounds. And uh, this elemental reaction has been extended to many catalytic transformations nowadays uh, by uh, copper system. So to make a long story short, we came up with the system that allows the uh, coupling between vinyl arenes, hydrosilanes, and allyl bromides to, uh, to give uh, alkylated arene product. And that uh, in the presence of both and, uh, palladium and copper, Catalyst. So here you generate allyl ethyl nucleophilic species in situ without uh, uh, the need to, uh, to have uh, independent uh, process to have such uh, uh, nucleophilic uh, species. So under these reaction conditions, several functional groups are tolerated to give the corresponding 1,1 di allyl ethane product in uh, modest to good yields. Here is shown the, uh, again the catalytic cycle for the synergistic uh, cross coupling reaction. Again, palladium is respon responsible for the activation of allyl bromides, whereas copper halide is first transformed to copper alkoxide that reacts with hydrocyanin to give copper hydride. And then hydrocupulation takes, takes place across the vinyl arenes to give secondary alkyl copper intermediates. And then transmetallation between two, these two species generates the, another palladium two intermediate that is 
is responsible for the formation of a 1-1 diallyl ethane product. At that stage, we further uh, imagine that uh, could we change the hydro uh, cupellation step to uh, you know, introduction of some uh, functional groups through the uh, species like this. Particularly, we became interested in the uh, use of boron species, so that uh, you have uh, beta boryl functionalized alkyl kappa species that can undergo the cross coupling type reaction to give 1 uh, 1 diaryl 2 boryl ethane product. This transformation repre represents that uh, uh, you have a kind of allyl boration of uh, vinyl arenes to give a, a functionalized alkyl boron compound that should be useful for further synthetic elaboration. The key body recuperation step has again been, was reported by Professor Sadigi, and uh, this reaction has actually been uh, applied to uh, intermolecular carboboration of alkenes by Professor Yoshida, but uh, the scope of limited, scope of such intermolecular carboboration uh, of our kings is still very much limited. So again, we come up with the, the optimized reaction condition that gives uh, allyl boration products from uh, vinyl arenes, diborane, and allyl bromides, but in the presence of uh, paradigm and the copper catalyst. You see that there are many different uh, functionalities as well as heteroaromatic moieties are tolerated under these reaction conditions to give the corresponding 1-1 diaryl uh, ethyl boron compounds. The transformation can be also uh, applicable to the uh, use of uh, alpha beta unsaturated ester so that uh, you have uh, beta boryl ester product in good yields. To prove the cooperativity uh, between palladium and, uh, and copper, I'd like to show you some uh, experimental uh, efforts to prove uh, that cooperativity. First, independently prepared alkyl copper species undergoes a coupling with uh, bromobenzene in the presence of a palladium catalyst to give the corresponding allyl boration product. So this results show that uh, indeed the kappa species is, is responsible for the generation of the uh, allyl boration product. And this stoichiometric reaction doesn't work at all in the absence of a paradigm uh, catalyst. Again, then we perform the catalytic reactions uh, under some control uh, reaction conditions. Under the optimized reaction conditions, as I already said, you have allyl boration product in very good use. And we also observed a small amount of hydroboration product and phenyl uh, boronate uh, compounds in a small amounts. In the absence of paradigm catalyst, we didn't see any trace amount of the phenyl boration product. And we only observed the hydroboration product in 22% yield. On the other hand, in the absence of a copper catalyst, we still didn't see any trace amount of phenyl early boration product. In that case, we see some uh, phenyl, uh, phenyl boron compounds that is actually derived from uh, palladium catalyzed Miura type boryation of uh, bromobenzene. So these ex experiments should also support the, the idea that the uh, cooperative synergistic catalysis is responsible for the generation of the phenyl boration product. You could argue that the reaction may proceed through initial diboration followed by cross coupling of the uh, benzylic position exclusively to give the uh, actually same early boration product. To, to prove that possibility, we prepare the bisboron compound that is available from the platinum catalyzed diboration of alkenes reported by Ishiyama and Miyaura. And this compound was put under the reaction conditions for the re uh, the use of uh, <coughs> bromobenzene and vinyl naphthalene and uh, diborane. We see the uh, product derived from vinyl naphthalene in good use, whereas 
the beast boron compound was recovered, and no trace amount of uh, the coupling fr derived from beast uh, borylated uh, compound was observed. So uh, this experiment should support that uh, this uh, sequential diboration followed by cross coupling process is not operative under these reaction conditions. So certainly cooperative synergistic paradigm kappa system is responsible for the, uh, this early elaboration reaction. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, the resulting uh, boron moiety can be further used for the uh, elaboration of the uh, molecular structure so that uh, we demonstrate here that uh, you have a tri allyl FM product which is, was reported to be biologically active in a two step starting from a readily available uh, uh, chemicals. The chemistry can be extended to alkynes so that you have uh, early boration of alkynes, again by palladium and copper uh, cooperative synergistic catalysis. So you can see some uh, uh, substrate scope, and uh, this chemistry was actually reported by uh, Professor Semba from my group uh, yesterday. Indeed, the same transformation was uh, recently reported by Brown, who showed that the uh, uh, product can be obtained just by single copper catalyst. But in his system, you, you can only use aryl iodides. You don't have any reactivity with aryl bromides or chlorides in the absence of a palladium catalyst. So again, here I can emphasize that the synergistic palladium and the copper catalyst is, is uh, essential to activate aryl chlorides and aryl bromides to obtain the corresponding aryl, alkyne aryl boration product. Intermolecular aryl boration of alkynes was also reported by Professor Suginobe, but you need uh, uh, some uh, air-sensitive chloroborane and aryl zirconium reagent to obtain the same product. With that, I hope that I have convinced you that a cooperative synergistic catalysis is a, a very effective strategy to develop a new synthetic transformation. We just showed that the palladium kappa cooperative system, but uh, we are currently actively working on uh, the combination of many different transform metal complexes to develop the completely new transformation that should be innovate innovative for synthetic organic chemistry, we believe. <clears throat> Before ending my talk, let me have a minute to advertise our uh, uh, session in past the coming Pacific Game, focusing on cooperative catalysis by two different metal complexes. We plan to have a very good speakers with balance of uh, senior and uh, young chemists uh, who are very rising uh, chemists particularly young ones, uh, from US and Asian countries. So if you are interested in this uh, uh, exciting upcoming field in the catalysis, please join this uh, session. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank my coworkers, particularly uh, uh, Professor Semba and uh, Ken Mr. Kenta Ariyama, who made major contributions uh, to the topic that I uh, told you today. Uh, Particularly, Professor Semba uh, had a, you know, main uh, initiative to, to drive this project uh, forward. And I, I hope he will be standing on this stage after 10 years for 20 years memorial uh, anniversary symposium of MBLA. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'd like to also thank uh, funding support from government resources but, uh, and particularly uh, some funding focusing on special topic like uh, uh, molecular activation organized by Professor Chatani, and more recently one uh, focusing on uh, molecular technology organized by Professor Yamamoto. Thanks again for the inv invitation and your kind attention. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the nice